started recording now, but it'll be it'll be just the last half, so I apologize about that. I gotta since it's such a scramble sometimes on uh, getting the screen, stream running, I needed like a checklist to go through just to make sure I don't don't forget anything important like that. Hmm. So Ohio State looking at the scoreboard now with the the lineups here for Vault, starting off with uh, Dexter uh, Rodiker. Hopefully, I'm saying that right. And Vault's a fast event, so you know, blink and you'll miss it. <laughs> yeah. And this is uh, kind of some of the comments I was making before um, on previous streams about the virtual judging. That's kind of one thing that could potentially be difficult on Vault is just how fast it goes, and there's a lot of deductions to kind of catch in that short time, and it's even hard sometimes to catch these deductions in real time. And so the the virtual aspect and and if there's any problems with the stream and stuff that could be a little bit cause of uh, for cause of concern there. But if those of you know for those of you who aren't so aware about how the Verdius kind of virtual competition platform works, all of these routines are also being filmed kind of locally on a device, um, just in case there's any problems with judging over the stream. They can send over the the video copy and judge off of that. So it looks like this is going to be a Yurchenko style vault. Um, a Yurchenko is where you do a round off onto the, the the vault runway and land with your feet on the board and then kind of do a back handspring up and over the table into your vault. Um, and y you can tell because they have that safety collar around the board, the springboard. And that's just to make sure, you know, if anything kind of goes off on the round off, um, you're a little bit protected from if you're on the side of the board. There could, there could be quite a bit of potential for ankle injury. And that mat's actually required to be there, so uh, on your Chanko style vaults. Getting the green light now. Get started here. Make sure my stream is live. Looks like I'm a few seconds behind, so I'll fix that after this vault. Also, if you want to update, we're now on event four. Good catch, good catch. That's why You're I got the top. That's why I got to get that um, to update automatically. Yeah. <clears throat> there we go. Here comes the vault. Chinko double full to that stuck landing. Overall done pretty cleanly. Wow. That is uh, exactly what you want from your leadoff guy. I'm going to just make sure my stream on OSU is live now. So don't have any problems with <laughs> the two streams kind of overlapping routines. Now Sam Baradagunta, if I'm saying it right. <laughs> yep. A lot of, a lot of difficult uh, last names in, in gymnastics, I think. Um, yeah. I know my last name was definitely one that was was difficult to, to get right. I heard a lot of Nagai, but nope, just Nai. Sam's getting the, the green light now. Now, I will say as a non-vaulter, I still don't know the out-of-bounds rules about those white lines. Is it the same as floor where one foot is one-tenth, two is, what did you yep. say, three-tenths or five? Yep. No, it's three tenths. Okay. So same thing as floor, and uh, very solid vault. Uh, just had a little yeah. bit of a hop there, which uh, you know the hop didn't really go anywhere. It just kind of was uh, adjusting that weight, so he uh, he's gonna have a small hop deduction as well as loses out on that stick bonus, unfortunately. But other than that, very solid. Now fourteen three five for Dexter. That's a big score to start us off here. But I think there's definitely enough firepower in both lineups to have the potential to beat that.
Now Justin Nachow. And the score's already come in for, for uh, Sam's Vault, 13-8. Pretty high score. Could have been a little bit higher if he uh, got that stick. Ooh, there we go. Two and a half to a little bit of a step, but other than that, very clean. It's going to put up a big score as well. That's a, hard, a higher difficulty vault uh, than the last guy we saw from OSU, which was a, a 4.8 value. This one's a, a 5.2. Fed Phil says, greetings uh, from Germany again. Nice to see your commentary again. Thanks for tuning back in. It's uh, it's great to have people from from overseas. Hopefully you're enjoying the stream. Now Connor Van Lu. Up second for Navy. Yeah, I'm curious what we'll see from him. He was training. Of course, this was a year ago. The last I saw him. Uh, double full. Your tanko double full. But he was also working on a two and a half. Hmm. It's like, oh, looks like we'll just see the one and a half. Yep. Uh, just the one and a half, but very clean. Yeah, he was always very clean on vault. Yeah, and when we, you know, once again, when we think about kind of what deductions are on vault, there's quite a bit going on. Um, you've got things in the pre-flight, which is any point before, you know, between the hitting the board and, and kind of getting up on the table. Um, things like splitting the legs, um, you know, uh, bending the legs, bending your arms, that kind of thing. Uh, there's deductions in the air. Are your feet apart? Are your toes not pointed? Um, things like that, uh, as well as kind of your amplitude and your height. And then there's also your landings. Sorry if you can hear the, the dog in the background barking. <laughs> Sean Nybarger here. Pretty solid double full there. Small step on the landing. Wow. And if we look at the scoreboard, we've got the score back from Justin Ochao actually beating out Dexter, 14-4-5, and that's partially just because it's a more difficult vault. So even though he didn't get the stick uh, like Dexter did, um, you know, still a little bit higher score overall. And a 13-8-5 from Connor Van Lu. Now Giovanni. Uh Gambatis, Gambatis, I think. <laughs> yep. Getting it down now. Pretty solid vault there, getting this the stick, but his one foot nice. wasn't. One foot was out of bounds. So that'll just be a small one tenth neutral deduction. Mm -hmm. But overall, and uh, to what you were saying about you know, flight on vaults like that, where you start, that's called a cause. You start when you hit the springboard facing the table. You do a round off. It's a lot harder to keep your legs together doing that than it is out of a Yurchenko. So that could be a reason. I've seen more Yurchenkos recently, I think, than in years past. Yeah, and I think that's exactly the reason because on those Yurchenko entry vaults where you're doing the round off onto the board, it's it like you're saying, it is much more difficult to mm -hmm. to kind of get those pre flight deductions. Angel Leon here for Ohio State, number four in the lineup. Sean Nybarger, the fourteen three. <laughs> A lot of these uh kind of low to mid fourteen vaults um for OSU. Pretty strong lineup. Looks like he's getting the, the green light here. Handspring double front and does it pretty nicely there. That's a, kind of a high risk, high reward vault. Uh, it's e very easy to, uh, to fall on that, but he had a very nice vault there. 
And I was judging Vault last week for OSU, and I think he he sat that one down. So I think he's excited to land that Vault pretty nicely today. Alex Kramer getting the green light for Navy. Here he goes. Yeah, it looks like he landed a little short there, and that caused um, a couple pretty big steps going forward. So that's going to get hit pretty hard. Yeah. It kind of looked like the vault went a little bit long, um, from you know far away from the table. That's not a deduction in a, in and of itself, but when that happens. You know, sometimes you kind of open up and you're you're not as fully rotated as you'd like to be. Fourteen point two uh, for Angel Leon and a fourteen two five for Giovanni. Wow, nice. And Alex's score already coming in a thirteen two. From a judging perspective, vault's kind of nice because as a judge, you want to kind of judge as quickly and accurately as you can, keep the the meat moving along. And vault, you don't really have to worry too much about that uh, generally because it's very, very quick. A very nice stuck double full wow. here. This is a great. That was pretty. Great vault lineup for OSU so far. And I mean that's that's their fifth score already, and these guys are are they're already going to have five scores uh, in that kind of low to mid 14s which is kind of right where you want to be and so this is going to be yep. a huge 14-3 for Cameron Nelson coming in already Josh Williams now for Navy I think we're going to see a hand double out of Josh as well see if he can get that on his feet mm -hmm. I've seen him go back and forth though so Double oh, yeah, full, there it is. yeah, bit of a big, uh, big step there, but overall relatively clean. Um, mm -hmm. You know, for the most part, most of these vaults are 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 done pretty well, I think. Especially, yeah, I, I'm guessing the double full for him is seen as you know his safer option. So yeah, not as high of a, a good choice. Not as high of a start, but definitely easier to land than something yeah. like a double front. Now, last up is uh, Kazuki Hayashi for OSU. See if he can uh, drop one of those other scores here. They're all looking really good. Double full. And uh, I actually think, you know, th this was still a, a pretty nice looking vault, but I actually think this might be the lowest scoring vault for OSU. We'll see if that ends up being true. I was going to say, it'll be tough to beat the scores that already came in. For, yeah, I mean, they're, they're so solid. And this vault, yeah. it was it was pretty nice. It was a little bit loose in the air. Um, you know, you see his kind of feet splitting a little bit. But then where, where he's really going to get hit is on that landing. You know, he's not really prepared, well prepared for that landing. His chest is, is very far down, so he's probably going to get a 3 10th deduction on that. And then he had a bit of a hop backwards. So yep. it'll be interesting to see, for sure. But still a very solid vault. And we've got the salute here for Travis Keller, last guy for Navy. Two and a half, jumps completely out of bounds, so that'll be a three-tenth neutral. But, I mean, overall, pretty solid. I'm sure he was happy with that vault, yeah. yeah. That he was, you know, working on that pretty much the entire season last year. Um, I'm not sure. I think he successfully competed it once or twice, but yeah, getting a, a vault like that onto your feet at one of the first meets of the season is, I'm sure, very, very exciting for the team. Yeah, and it, you know, it's. Uh, I think they're definitely hoping it kind of only gets better from from there. Uh, pretty solid right. vault vault lineup for both of these guys. Uh, OU 
or sorry, OSU. Kazuki's score comes in 14.05, so I was I was right on my guess that it's uh, mm-hmm. not going to be the counting score. But they, you know, they're all over 14, which is just fantastic. And 71.6 uh, event total, very very solid score there. Um, for Navy, finishing at 69.75, like we kind of talked about before, I'm sure they were kind of shooting, you know, especially on vault, higher scoring event uh, for that uh, 70 mark. But they are very, very close to it. And we saw some, some yeah. really nice vaults today. Travis Keller finishing off with a, a 14-0. And Giovanni up there, you know, that 14-2-5. So I'm going to change the camera so we don't get motion sickness here. <laughs> <laughs> These guys just warming up for their P-bar rotation. Event number five, let me change that. And for those of you watching, please, 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 if you guys are coming to the Oklahoma stream, which, by the way, is going to be a great great meet um at the beginning of the stream please remind me to hit that hit the record button so that i i'm able to upload this to to uh to youtube for those who can't make the stream or for those who want to watch later um i'll try to remember myself but sometimes there's quite a bit going on also if you're enjoying the stream please consider uh, making a donation even if it's pretty small half of it will be going to the cga the college gymnastics association to uh, support our sport at this level um and the other half will just go to supporting the stream i've got some things in mind that i can can do to make the stream even better and i'm excited to kind of bring those to you guys um on our next streams we also have some some uh some additional guest co-commentators that i'm bringing on for the ou uh, and army meet that'll be uh, peter daggett ou alumni and uh, really cool guy. And uh, <clears throat> for the meet later this evening, Cal versus um, uh, versus Arizona State, I've got Tanner Dowell, uh, who is a former Cal gymnast. He was uh, a junior coach uh, up to a couple months ago and knows a ton about the sport. He's also a judge, and so he's, he's going to be really interesting to hear from as well. Uh, what time is the stream again? Yeah, let me pull it up here. We've got Oklahoma versus Army today at 2.45. Uh, this, that's when the stream begins. Uh, Central, Central time. And California versus Arizona State, 6.15 Central time. This kind of The schedule is on my uh, Instagram and Twitter, so feel free to go take a look at it there. Andrew Brower, I think, getting the green light here from Verdius. Ready to compete. Now, parallel bars. This was an event that they uh, they had a bit of a hard time with um, last weekend. The judging was was a bit tough, but they also, I think, had uh, several errors here. So, like I, I think I mentioned at the very beginning of the stream, the meet with Illinois last weekend, OSU versus Illinois, it's very close meet until the last two events. Then uh, OSU had some issues on P-bars and high bar, unfortunately. Really unique mount here on the one bar. <laughs> Pretty difficult, and you don't see it quite often. Ooh, and it looks like he had a bit of an error coming out of it. Peach support. And that is a uh, very difficult skill right there. And I think he may have had some issues with that uh, in the last competition. So it was good to see him do that successfully. Healy and Diom now. Stutzan. A lot of uh, upper bar elements for him. You can only have five elements of the same category counting in a single routine. So on P-bars, the categories are support elements. So things like that we saw the Diamadoff to handstand, things that you're doing kind of like on your hands. Then there's also the uh, group two, which is the upper arm elements. So front uprise is kind of the most basic one and the one that you see the most common. Uh, group three, which is the long hang swings, things like giants, things like moys, anything that you're kind of coming down beneath the bars. Uh, and then, you know, your last element group is your dismount element group. So now we've got Giovanni uh, Gambet, Gambatis.
and uh, yeah, you can you can get a good view of all those the paper crowd back there. Yeah. Good to see good to see so many people uh kind of supporting the program with that. Right. Really nice giant there. Diom, small split. Just that's overall his line, you know, he keeps very tight. Yeah, he's looking very solid. And you'll kind of see the bar flex as he's doing these skills. And that's part of why, you know, staying solid is so important on this event. Because these P bar these P bars, they're not completely solid. They they have flex, they have give. You get spring from them. And the tighter that you are in your body, the more energy that you're kind of converting into uh, into the bars and you get more pop from that and you're able to kind of do these skills a little bit better. Mm -hmm. That was a very solid routine, especially first up yeah. for Navy. That was a great start. Yeah, it was very solid indeed. And definitely going to be, I think, a pretty solid scorer for them as well. Andrew Brower, 12-5. Yeah, there were a few errors there, unfortunately, but... overall looking good uh second up for osu max andershenko starting up with a front uprise and once again that's a upper arm element Healy. Now the thing is, when you swing out of that Healy to handstand, you got to hold that handstand for um, for two seconds before you swing back in the opposite direction. It's uh, considered a change of direction, and uh, that's a three temp deduction. So it's another thing to look out for. Now he had a pretty difficult skill there. Diem, uh, you know, one and a quarter to the one bar. Unfortunately, kind of came off there. So he's really got to reset and kind of mentally get it back together and finish yeah. the routine the best he can. Stood sand. Really nice DM there. Crush stand standing into the dismount, and a really nice dismount as well. So, would have been a really solid Very routine. Strong if, finish. Would have been a really solid yeah. routine if it weren't for that that fall, unfortunately. And there you go, thirteen one five for Giovanni. I bet he's pretty pleased with that score. Yeah, that's a great score. And now we have Caleb Hickey. Second up here. Getting the green light on Verdius. swing hand and he's going into some long hang elements there that's a peach to support very nicely done just like Giovanni I'd say so far he's looked really solid in this routine not given a lot away and in, in, you know little mm -hmm. deductions of your you know feet splits and and whatnot looks Dion. a little archy on his handstands but right and that's something that we saw in that Dion there. And I think that was partially because yep. of that body position. Good oh. position there into the press. Yeah, struggling a little bit to get up there, I think. But yep. hopefully that doesn't hurt his dismount. Didn't look like it. Pretty solid. It looks Ooh. like it was almost a stick. Maybe a small hop. Yep. Lean, lean back a little bit on that into the dismount but other than that 
Pretty solid. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, no, that's 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 exactly kind of what you want to see. Eleven seven for Max Andrushenko. Unfortunately, that fall just kind of hurt him there. But now second up for oh, third up for OSU, Angel Leon. I think he's got the green light. And I'm um, excited to see Sam McCulloch here in the uh, watching the stream. Welcome, Sam. Uh, do the donations go towards saving men's gymnastics? Half of the donations uh, will go to the CGA to help save men's gymnastics, and the other half uh, go to help support supporting the stream and helping me put this on. And I've got a few uh, new equipment ideas I'd like, starting with upgrading the screen. <laughs> Really nice whip it to start the routine there. Swing it up to handstand. Peach, hand, bit of a step. Stepping with those hands is a deduction. Any kind of regrasp here is a deduction. Ooh, it comes off the bars there. And the other thing that I, I think I'd, I'd like to mention to everybody is if you'd like to just donate straight to the CGA, you can do that very easily. Um, I can put the link here in the chat uh, once uh, in a second here. But, you know, money towards that cause really helps um, kind of keep the sport going at this collegiate level when it, it faces so many difficulties. We've lost uh, a lot of good programs over the years and, unfortunately, several more this year. Get spec on the bars with a solid DM. And there's that uh, DM kind of one and a quarter to the one bar that mm. Max had a problem with earlier. And a double front tucked dismount. Very nice. Very solid. He's probably uh, a little disappointed with the fall, cause, but the rest of the routine looked really great. Yeah, he's, he finished very strong. That double front dismount, again, a blind landing. I've seen a lot of people, you know, going for the stick. They, they kick out early and end up on their butt, mm -hmm. or they try yeah. to go aggressively, and it's just so easy to over-rotate that, too. Absolutely. So. But Absolutely. a very beautiful looking dismount when it works well. Yep. Twelve four for Caleb Caleb Hickey. Not quite as high as Giovanni, and I think that's you know, there's a couple reasons there. Um like you said, that I think that arched handstand position kinda got him into some trouble a couple times and mm -hmm. uh, having the double tuck dismount um hurts him in the start start value. So now we've got, i got to go back to my uh, scoreboard. We've got Alexander Brown, third up for Navy. Let's see if he can kind of keep that momentum going here. Peach hand, a little short of handstand. Got to really kind of catch into that handstand position. But a nice giant. Now, you might have mentioned it already, but is Alexander one of those guys that's from Massachusetts? Uh, no, he's, I think, okay. Louisiana. He's a southern boy. Okay. But, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's really a shame that we don't have, uh, like, really any southern uh, college programs. You know, mm -hmm. something like in the SEC. I think that would be really cool. Programs like at LSU, right, Alabama, I think those would be super awesome. Yeah. They got major women's programs, but... Fortunately, not men's. All oh, right, Georgia so United. That's right. Oh, true. Yeah, Alex with a pretty, pretty simple, but pretty solid routine. End up with a stick there. I'm sure, he's happy with that. I think I don't know if he competed B-bars at all last year. So. Yeah, then it's good. Happy to be on it's the good. To, it's good to see him in the lineup. It was a really solid mm -hmm. routine. Uh, I don't think it'll quite score as high as. Giovanni and, and Caleb, but but still uh, still pretty solid. Now Justin Achao for OSU, and I just put in the chat, um, you know where you can donate uh, directly to the CGA if you'd like. Really nice peach hand there. Getting it right up to handstand. Bob Zar. 
So far, this is looking to be a really, really nice routine. To pelt, very clean. Diamadoff, small hand uh, re-grasp and uh, small bending of the arms. Ooh, pretty big arm bend there in the swing hand. He just needs to kind of nail this landing here, and this will be a really solid routine. And he does with a, a bit of a step, but overall very nice. Sam, thanks for the donation. Uh, he said, uh, love the outlet. Thanks for doing this. Keep this up. You're very welcome. I love being able to do this and, and help kind of have a little bit more of a consistent place for people to watch uh, collegiate men's gymnastics. It's so hard to keep track of where everything is and and where you can watch things. And it's kind of, a, I think, a, a great way to get, and get the community, get community together. And we've got, you know, really fun conversations going on in the chat. And Sam, I'd love to have you on, by the way. Uh, Dan Ribeiro mentioned that the Illinois-Michigan uh, meet maybe uh, Verdius competition. And I feel like that would be a great meet to get you on and co-commentate. So I'll have to talk with you a little bit offline. But now we've got Dan Clark, number four for, uh, for Navy. Alex Brown's score for Navy came in at a 12-3. So just behind Caleb. Whip it swing hand. Slight arm bend uh, on it. But other than that, pretty nice. Peach hand. Giant front up rise. So far, really nice routine. Yeah, Dan always looks pretty clean. Yeah, I have to admit that I've I've been really impressed with the uh, the Navy P bars lineup so far. I think it's from what we've seen their their strongest event. I'd say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've definitely over you know maybe two or three years we've come a long way in P bars. P bars used to be kind of the turning point for all of our meets. If it went well, we would finish strong, and ooh, if it didn't go well, well. Ooh. Yeah, and uh, like Mike Burns says, I kind of. I'm good at jinxing things because he had that double front kind of straight to his butt. But that's kind of what you were saying yeah. before of why that's such a difficult dismount is because, you know, it's it's easy to kind of just open up, ready for that landing, and you open up and there's no floor there, right? <laughs> right. Sorry, I just lost one of my earbuds there, so I missed what you were saying. But, but yeah, and that's – so Dan prefers the front dismount over the back dismount. Mm. But, yeah, it's, it's just a – so it's a blind landing. It's tough to get right every time, but. Yeah, I'm sure he's a little disappointed that it didn't work out a little bit better. But Jesse mm -hmm. Tyndall now for OSU, second to last guy up in the lineup. That's a great looking scale, the mm -hmm. giant DM. Yep. Really beautiful. I mean, and the guys that do it, they just tend to, to make it look really good too because they kind of have that natural, strong giant swing there. Right. Um, a lot of difficulty in this routine. You know, a lot of stuff to one bar, uh, which tends yep. to be to be more difficult than to two bars. And he's doing it very well. And oh. <laughs> Very unique dismount there, and the way that he does it um, <laughs> looks kind, yeah. kind of kind of scary to me, actually. You know, <laughs> most most guys you kind of see a bit of a kick out into that half turn, um, true, in uh, from the double front, but he kind of just turns it, still tucked, um, mm -hmm. almost almost looks like he's like a little bit lost in the air, but I don't think that's the case because I mean that was a great right. great landing, and that's gonna put up a I think a a big score. Justin Achao, 13-1, and Dan Clark, 11-6-5. So, yeah, Dan would have been kind of right up there in the in the high 12s yeah. probably if he uh, – or mid to high 12s if he had kept that on his feet. Now Travis Keller, 
Second to last uh, guy in the lineup for Navy. Starting on one bar. Once again, a little bit more unique. Whip it swing handstand into the Healy. Into the Healy upper arm. Nice looking sequence there. I like the continuity. Yeah. Nice straddle, one and a quarter to upper arm. Stutz a little short of handstand, but he fought for it. Small step on the landing there, but very solid routine again. Yeah. Excited to see it. I'd be happy with that. And Jesse Tyndall putting up that 13-5. Big score. Mm. If he kept a couple of those things a little bit tighter, I mean, he'd be pushing right into, the, into those 14s. And, uh, yeah, in the chat we've got Ambert from uh, Verdius. Uh, welcome to the stream. And uh, hope you're enjoying. Yeah, Ambert's been putting in some great, great work with this virtual platform and allowing for this kind of stream to be possible. Um, so big thanks to him and kind of, you know, helped uh, keep this, this season on its feet uh, when it was definitely the most questionable. And him and his team put together Verdius very, very quickly. It's definitely a big undertaking. So really excited to see how successful it's been uh, at our meets the last couple weekends and, and this weekend. And also, yeah, big shout out to uh, all of our overseas viewers, UK, Germany. Uh, if anybody else is watching from, from another country, let me know. I'd, I'd love to hear it. And, uh, you know, one of the biggest things you can do for the stream is uh, and keep streams like this going is sharing with people who might be interested. I know there's definitely some people watching on Verdius uh, without the commentary that maybe would like the commentary but don't doesn't know it's here. Now, Sean Nybarger here, last guy up on P-Bars for OSU. Starting pretty standard, kit press and stand. Peach hand. Very nice. And Bob's are really well opened um, as he re grasps with the bar. Wow, yeah. Another big uh, to pelt there. So far, really clean and very difficult. I think it's also just interesting, Ben, to point out the. The kind of preference that guys have for for different categories of skills, right? Mm -hmm. Sean definitely, you can see he he relies on those those underbar swinging skills, <laughs> giants to pelts, bobs ours, um, quite a bit. But you get other guys that get up. I think Andrew Brower was one of them, and they're real comfortable on the upper bars, right? You're seeing a lot mm -hmm. of Dioms, Stutz, and and whatnot. Yeah, and I yeah, I mean. It also goes back to body type. I hate to point out, but Sean is on the shorter side, so those under bar swings mm -hmm. definitely come easier for somebody right. uh, who doesn't have to worry about his knees hitting when he goes down below, right? Yep, absolutely. P Mish Seven asks, um, "Has floor already happened?" Yep, floor was the first event, and I do apologize uh, because, as I mentioned earlier, I forgot to record um, this, the competition. I started recording it on Vault. So unfortunately, floor, horse, and rings, uh, part of the stream, I won't have uploaded to YouTube later. But if you go to Verdius um, right after the competition, uh, you'll be able to kind of go through each of the events and watch the routines. There's like little timestamps by the, by the guys' names on the scoreboard, and you can just click play, and it'll take you right to the routine. Now we've got... Now, help me with the pronunciation here, Ben. Is it Diren? Diren. Diren Lushman. Diren Lushman. Last guy up for Navy here. Oh, and he's going for the peach half, but comes down quite a bit. Yeah. Has to oh, really boy. fight for that. <laughs> That's going to be a pretty big, pretty big deduction. Oh, and he's struggling with the, the Diom. But he's fighting through, and I love to see that. Mm-hmm. Straddle press handstand. 
double pike to a bit of a hop. Yeah, a bit of a fight of, uh, through the routine, but I, I really like that because, you know, there are some times that you watch guys and they're having a hard time on a skill and they just kind of give up. And, yeah. you know, that's, that's, that's just not, I think, the way to approach gymnastics. And so I really like to see him fight through that to the end. Yeah, I agree. Uh, the McVeighs, thanks so much for donating 50 bucks, and says, great job, Brandon, really appreciate it. Yeah, I'm glad to see that. Thanks so much for the donation. Now, looking at the scoreboard here, I mean, I was really impressed with both teams on P-Bars. I think this was, uh, was a strong event for both of them. Ohio State, Sean Nybarger coming in with a 13-0 for a team score of 64.35. And just to compare that to last week where I said they had a bit of difficulties, they went 61.6. So they brought that up um, almost three points there, uh, which is... More in the ballpark, I think, of, of where I'd expect, I'd expect them, and I think they could squeeze out a little bit more because we saw a few falls there. And, uh, yeah, uh, Navy's total score, 62.8. Pretty solid. I mean, P-Bars is definitely a tough event to score high on compared to something like uh, Vault or maybe Rings. So I think that's a that's a pretty solid score there. But but Navy also has some some routines that they could clean up a little bit and that they can, uh, that they can uh, improve on. Jorna0622 asks, Brandon, we we're chiming in and out while we we're at practice. And I love to I love to hear about when where everybody's kind of tuning in from because some people are like, oh, I'm tuning in from a meet. Oh, we're tuning in from practice. Uh, so it's kind of fun to hear where everybody's at. And this is, he says, uh, sorry, Pommel question. A woo to immediate double Russian. How much do you get back in bonus? So if you're talking about, I mean, so... Just those two skills alone, if you're talking about uh, FIG or if you're talking about NCAA, uh, there's not really any bonus there. Um, juniors for Pommel Horse, if I'm correct, they get bonus on the, the Wu, which is a two-tenth bonus um, on the E-value group three. So I think in junior, in JO, that would be a, that would be a two-tenth bonus. But there would be no bonus for, uh, for uh, college or, or FIG. Now, first guy up here, Kazuki Hayashi. Starts off with a um, Yamawaki. And you'll see from the OSU guys quite a bit of uh, spinning spinning skills and stalling skills, and sometimes combinations of that. Um, and one thing that you have to be careful of on these skills is hitting those angle requirements, and I've mentioned this previously, where... Oh, and a very nice Kopex. It's a very difficult skill. Mm -hmm. But where you really want to try to get all these skills going to handstand, um, and if any deviations from that are deductions. So even on that skill right there, a quast, uh, you want to catch that in handstand, and you can see he was a bit over. Probably going to be, I'd say, a three-tenth deduction on that. But overall, pretty solid routine. Um, you know, stayed on, looked pretty good. Yeah. I'm impressed he did hit those three releases right at the end of the routine. Normally, you yeah. see guys knock those out early on. Yeah, a lot of times you just kind of want to get those out of the way while you got energy. Mm -hmm. um, but So tell me a little bit about the, the Navy high bar lineup and what you're kind of expecting from them here. So you probably will see more difficulty out of the Ohio lineup. Um, Navy, I mean, across the board, we, we tend to favor good execution over high difficulty. Mm -hmm. um, but having said that, uh, I mentioned Max has some great release combos. Um, Cash should be on. He should be the anchor on this event. He always has um, a great routine put together. Um, oh, jeez. But yeah, no, we'll we'll see a good amount of well executed um, releases and hopefully a lot of stuck dismounts. Yeah, I'll definitely be on the lookout for that. So, looked like a Yamawaki there, but it was a little piked. So they, the judges might call that a Veronin, which is a B version of the skill. Uh, the Yamawaki being a D, so it would be a two-tenth downgrade. Tkachev. Nice Stalder there, getting up to handstand. Stalder Higgins. Now, the thing is, that Stalder went great to handstand, but the Higgins part of it was a little bit deviated. Yeah. Needs to all be to handstand. Now, 
and a pretty solid dismount as well. Nice. Um, you know, definitely some deduction in that routine and definitely an easy routine, but I think a pretty solid uh, all-around set for, for the leadoff guy. Yeah. And a 12-9 for Kazuki. Once again, like P-Bars, high bar tends to be a uh, a more difficult event for, for high scoring. You tend to have lower scores. Uh, and just for reference, Ohio State went 62.9 um, last weekend, and they had quite a few deductions. I was actually judging high bar, uh, doing the difficulty score, and or they had quite a few falls, rather, um, on the event. I think they may have had something like four falls. So if they, assuming no falls, they could be pushing up, you know, 67, 68, and I think that's yeah. kind of their target on the event. Now, Paul Burney for Ohio State. Yeah, Milwaukee, and that's kind of how you want to do it, a bit more open and, and stretched over the bar, although it could be done even better, I think. And a Coleman there, that's a full twisting flip over the bar, re-grasping. Wow. I can't, that's one of those skills, you know, there's a category I have of just skills I can't even, like, um, pre, like imagine myself, pre, like, right. attempting. Like, I can't even pretend to do that skill, <laughs> and that one is <laughs> close to the top of the list, I'd say. Yeah. Straddle Tkachev. We saw the straddle Tkachev half earlier. Okay, you Both. saw he was he was close. He was far on uh, far from the bar on that Coleman, mm -hmm. but on his Tkachev, he was pretty close. He had to kind of push that bar away from him. Yep, um, and you know that's something that's always difficult. It looks like he got the, the stick on the landing there, which was uh, which was pretty solid there. I, overall, a pretty good routine. Um, a lot of difficulty there, and like you said, yeah, you get some some release moves where you're far away and you're grabbing on you know by your fingertips and you get some releases where you're like about to eat the bar and you're just hoping that you can yeah. kind of swing out of it um so i think getting that sweet spot in the middle is kind of the key to these releases um right but it's a little tough dave and marsh saying tough, tough judging again today seems like these online meets are scoring lower than in, in, the in-person ones that have happened so far hopefully just a coincidence yeah i think there's a uh, you know, I'm not 100% sure who's on this panel today. Um, generally, these meets have been judged a little tougher. I think all around, um, the the judging has tightened up a little bit, um, both in person and virtual. And I think, you know, what's important is really, um, ideally, you want consistency kind of across the different meets. But ideally, I mean, but what you really need is consistency within the meet. And I think for the most part, we've been seeing that. Um, and so that's that's good. Ryan McVeigh here on high bar uh, for Navy. Nice talk half there. Quast, a little bit of an angle deduction once again. I and mean, this is such a hard skill to do without an angle deduction, to be honest. True. But overall, really clean. Endo, full spin mix. It's another one that's tough to get straight to that handstand position. And we'll take a look at the scoreboard right after this routine couple of score updates oh nice i really like his dismount uh you don't really see any pike in his hips uh you mm -hmm. kind of extended all the way to the ground uh and yep. he got that stick so that was awesome to see so eric went 11 9 um and paul bernie went 12 4 5 so yep lower scores generally Court Jester, thanks so much for donating 20 bucks. Um, really helps uh, support the the stream, and you know half of that will be going to CGA to help support the, the sport at the collegiate level. So thanks a lot. Now Max Andrushenko, third up for Ohio State, and he's you know he's a pretty big asset for OSU as well. We've seen him on what four or five events today, and. Mm -hmm. He, you know, I think he hasn't really been super deep on any of the lineups, uh, but he has been, you know, putting up some some pretty decent scores there. Now, he did just do a Takachev, looked like he was a little long and, and kind of pinged off the bar. Um, hopefully he's doing okay. I think his trainer is coming over. To some extent, so, some, so <laughs> there, there used to be a bit of a rule saying that as long as you weren't on your feet, uh, the time towards your 30 seconds doesn't start. However, recently, uh, I think in the last year or maybe two years, 
there was kind of an amendment to that saying if the gymnast is intentionally just laying down to kind of burn out time on the clock, kind of like what we saw right there, you saw him adjusting his grips, that kind of thing, um, that that could actually receive a uh, three-tenth sort of unsportsmanlike behavior deduction. Um, and I'm assuming that you would take that deduction and then you would also have your time counting from when he was on mm -hmm. the, you know, when he's still on the ground. So potentially it'd be interesting to see if, if that ends up happening here. Um, because the, the intention of that rule is if the gymnast is kind of hurt or just completely dazed, like on the ground, you know, that, that time shouldn't count against him on that 30 right. seconds. Yeah, I did not, I was not aware of that update in the rule, but mm -hmm. I agree with it. I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Cause what you were seeing, um, I can't remember if it was last year or two years back. Um, Oh, and he goes, Co he goes Kovacs and he just kind of pings off again. Yeah. But what you saw two years back is, is a lot of pretty much every team, every guy doing this kind of thing. This one looks like he slammed his head pretty hard against the ground. So uh, I think this would be kind of a legitimate, more legitimate yeah. reason um, to stay down here. But you would see every guy laying down on the ground, completely fine, just redoing their grips, taking their time, taking a breather, and then standing up there, uh, <clears throat> their gymnastics or their, their 30 seconds would start uh, counting. And so I feel like you can still game the rule a little bit. You know, you could kind of pretend uh, that you're, you're like hurt on the ground or, or just a little, you know, dazed, but, um, right. but it did look like he hit his heart, his head pretty hard there. So, yeah, I was, and I was going to say that gymnastics mats, they're not all soft. That one, he just kind of, mm -hmm made a connection with is a landing mat so it's not meant to cushion you it's supposed to be like a, a good hard landing surface so i've i've slammed my head like that a, a good number of times and it, it doesn't feel good so <laughs> yeah absolutely that's why i stuck to palm horse you know <laughs> yep you're falling <laughs> you're falling three feet from the ground if you fall at all and and really it's not about the falls it's actually more about the the thing you got to worry about on palm horse is is those uh those wooden pommels and your shins because yep. they don't they just don't like each other very much, you know? Yeah. Um, and it looks like Max isn't going to finish his routine, I believe. Um, so we're moving on to Navy here with uh, Diren uh, Lechman. And so, um, you know, what will happen here in the six-man, five-up count competition? Um, because it's six-man up, they, they won't replace Max in the lineup. They'll just compete their... The, the rest of their guys um, and they'll just have to kind of count every score um, mm -hmm. you know all five of those scores later in the season uh, something like if an, if an athlete gets injured or can't finish their routine uh, when it's five up five count then they're able to actually substitute somebody in at the end of the routine for a one point deduction so if this happened later in the season where Max was part of the five up five count lineup um, they would be able to put somebody else in at the end of the lineup for a one point deduction Yeah, Milwaukee there. I think that one will get credit. A little close, but that'll just be a deduction. Won't devalue it. Mm. Ooh. A little long on the Kovacs, unfortunately. Yep. Now, I can't remember. Did you compete any Kovacs skills? Uh, I trained them. I never competed them. Mm. I, I got to the point where I could do them consistently, but not not even in, in you know a routine right um it's just yeah didn't have the stamina for it and then it was just you know not worth it to try to fit it in there yeah for I sure was a, i was a yamawaki ginger connection mm -hmm. and a takachev guy <laughs> nice yeah no i mean every every gymnast is different you'll see some guys that love those skills and they can they're super consistent with them they're clean right some guys you'll see three or four takachevs in the routine just depends Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to see out of Max at mm. the end of this. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to that. The jam to the L grip giant. That one was always tough for me, you know, getting yep. in that position. And you can see a uh, really nice dismount nice. there. I, I, I like that one as well. He has a different yeah. style to it than most people. Most people do the, the sort of... Uh, like a layout half in half out action where you got half a twist on the first flip half a twist on the second flip and that kind of allows you to to see the ground the whole time on the second flip yep where he does more of a layout full in um, same value same skill of course but 
he does an entire flip or an entire twist in the first flip and then does a kind of a layout out. So now up, Angel Leon for OSU, number four in the lineup. And I got a question. What do you think about the proposed rule for the next code of points where uh, you can only have two or three of each release group? Um, I got to admit that when it comes to the, the next draft of the code of points, I've, I've looked over it, but that was maybe over a year ago. And, um, and I, I haven't focused too much on it because I want to focus and make sure I'm not confusing myself with the current rules. Um, so I don't really remember that rule exactly. But if what you're saying is, is right, um, I don't think I have too much of an opinion about it. I think in some ways it's good because it promotes skill diversity. Um, but it really depends how it interacts with other rules and, and value changes that are proposed in, the, in that code as well. Uh, so far here, really nice routine. We saw some, some good releases with that layout to Kachev there and that talk full earlier uh, was really nice as well. Layout to Kachev half. Looks like he might even do another Takachev. And this is kind of what we're talking about here, Takachev mania. Yeah. yeah. And all of them are pretty, you know, he puts them all in the same spot. There's not a whole mm -hmm. lot of variability in how far away he is from the bar, which is always good. Ooh, and a very nice dismount. Yeah, very nice indeed. Um, yeah. Overall, really nice routine there. And looking at the scores here, yeah, Max, uh, unfortunately, 2.6. Not going to have enough skills in there, and it's going to have some really, really big problems with that. But that's because he didn't, you know, only did half a routine. And then 11.05 for Duren. And Max Gerber up next for Navy. And yet, a couple other comments about the, the next version of the Code of Points. It is still in its draft forms. Um, but I think, you know, if you haven't read it, I think it's available somewhere online uh, if you can find it. And there are some pretty big changes. I think the biggest changes for NCAA gymnastics is going to probably be on floor, um, where they're really limiting the amount of um, sort of single flipping and twisting passes you can do with, with how they've revalued skills. So it's going to be really interesting to see how people adapt. And Max, <clears throat> starting off with the Yamawaki that I think will be downgraded to a Veronin. And here's the Takachas you were talking about. Nice. And he's got the connection on those, so we'll see a connection bonus. Talk half there. Overall, good difficulty in this routine. Keeping it pretty clean for the most part. Oh, and another really nice dismount. So close to the stick. Ooh, yeah. I think if there's something I've been really, you know, that's really stuck out with me to me on uh, Navy's high bar routines, it's the dismounts. I think they all look mm -hmm. really good. They're minimizing the in air deductions and they're setting themselves up for, for these stuck landings. Yeah, I think for the most part we we have laid out half and half outs, maybe one or two double doubles. Um, but yeah, typically you want to see a double double unless it's somebody that you know they're almost for sure gonna be able to stick it or get a mm. very minimal deduction mm. we're not very big risk takers mm. justin achow second to last guy up for osu and i think he's got a pretty solid high bar set here angel leon scoring a 12-8 and max's score just coming in 12-3 so there's that yamawaki nice and laid out Really nice uh, talk half there, kind of getting pretty close to handstand. Coleman, you can see he was oh, maybe a little bit far, but was able to grab that yeah. really nicely. Kovacs, that one was a little short. Now, it's kind of funny. Last weekend, when I was uh, judging them on high bar, during the, uh, the warm-up period, I believe it was uh, Justin, he warmed up, uh, I think it's Kovacs, and he was so close to the bar i mean his face was was coming down right on top of it and he just happened to kind of the rotation of his flip kept his face away from the bar but i was a little worried for him yeah and it's such a good routine up until that layout double double just coming in super short and mm -hmm. taking the fall there unfortunately <laughs> and 
you know, Giovanni. Now, yep. I was going to say uh, something about Navy's gym that you wouldn't know unless you actually go and, um, you know, experience it in person. They're on the third floor hmm. of a building right now, um, and there's there's a pit behind this high bar setup. You can kind of see just barely going down into it. Um, so down on the first floor, you see this big metal box coming out of the ceiling, and that's <laughs> actually the pit up from the gymnastics area. Huh. So. Yeah, it's interesting. I've actually never been to, uh, I don't think I've been to the Navy Academy at all. Never competed there all four years. Um, kind of wish I did. I mean, this I've never seen you guys' gym. It looks really big, actually. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. The, nice. I mean, the building itself is massive. It's very spacious in there. Yeah. But A nice Yamawaki to start off. It's very interesting. Yeah, no, it is interesting. And actually, the Illinois gym is similar. They're on the second floor. And oh, are they? Okay. the pit like you're saying goes down but it goes down into uh into the uh there, there used to be a pool an indoor pool oh, really? um in the building and it kind of goes down into there uh looks like he fell on i, I believe it was a coleman i was kind of talking was, but yeah <laughs> didn't quite finish the twist and only one of his hands i think was there yep so it's unfortunate it looks like he's uh staying down as well so maybe yeah. <laughs> maybe not super familiar with the new rule as well <laughs> um but hey i guess if both teams are don't know the rule then it's kind of kind of even right <laughs> i thought i'd point out one thing that i i thought about and that was when we we're talking about the the yamawakis versus the veronins the yamawaki being that stretched release going over the bar veronin being the piked equivalent of that um and you know as i was describing how the judging works earlier uh, I was mentioning that there's actually different difficulty judges on for each team. And this is where alignment in judging, you know, becomes really important because while the difficulty score, there should be one true difficulty uh, for each routine. Sometimes when skills are borderline, is it a Yamawaki? Is it a Veronin? It can be a little bit tough to evaluate. Um, and there can be some discrepancy there. And so that's where the judges really need to be aligned because if one D panel is, ooh, is more lenient about, you know, calling something a Yamawaki than the other, then that could bring a little bit of skew into the competition. But I think uh, right. overall they've been well aligned. Yeah, unfortunate here. Another kind of big error. Really nice dismount once again, but it's not gonna, not gonna really make up for uh, yeah for those problems. Twelve three for Max Gerber. Twelve four five for Justin. That would have been. Nice, nice, nicely up into the the mid thirteens if it weren't for the fall, the dismount. Right. We've got our last guy, Jesse Tyndall, OSU. A little bit of a rough rotation for both teams, so they think they'd like to see a nice slam set to to close out the meet. Mm -hmm. Endo, right into the endo full spin mix. Talk full to undergrip. That's an E value skill. Pretty difficult. Mm -hmm. Talk half. He makes these look pretty easy. Really tight throughout his whole body, so it's good to see. Layout to Kachev, like you were saying, right in that sort of target distance. Yeah. Uh, second to Kachev, maybe catching a little bit short. And that's the problem with catching short is that it makes it difficult to swing that next giant, you know, um, up without bending your arms. A couple other skills. And a nice stuck dismount. That's exactly probably wow, what they, yeah. were, they were looking for Very there. Very good routine to end on for sure. And 10-5-5 uh, five, five for Giovanni. Yeah, unfortunately, those two falls... Kind of got to him. And we're looking at our last competitor here. We've got Cash. Excited to see what he pulls out for Navy. Yeah, his, I think, was always the routine that I had the most fun watching last year. 
mm. very high flying, very not. He he is a clean gymnast, but not in the same way that um, you know somebody with like a perfectly straight line might look. He he's clean in, in a different way, but you know in the high flying sort of exciting sort of way. Right. Let's see him pull it together here. Our last routine of the competition. It's been great competition. Yeah, Milwaukee a little piked. I think they'll give it to him. Um, not piked enough to call it a Veronin. Ooh, and a Casina. Very, very difficult skill. Uh, you can see Akata a little little off, causing uh, yeah. some deduction in the next giant. Kovacs. I'm kind of getting flashbacks of like Tyson Bowl style routine here. Um, yeah. Like you were saying, high flying, really fun to watch. Yeah, see, so he's just struggling through all these catching, keeping the bar at the right distance, but mm -hmm. I think he's doing a good job of keeping it moving here. Getting that one arm giant in there right before the dismount. And a little bit uh, under-rotated on the dismount, a bit of a mm -hmm. big hop, but overall, really fun routine to watch. Um, yeah. This, specifically, this specific time, it probably won't score the biggest uh just because i know there was quite a bit of deduction coming out of the, some of those releases but yep. but I'm, I'm interested to see how that finishes up looking at our scoreboard ohio state finishing the event 63.9 and they did have to count um all five of those scores other than max um because he did not finish his routine uh comparing to last weekend ohio state went 62.9 on the event so they're up one point I think this is definitely an area that they're going to be looking to to increase even more. Ohio State finishing out the meet with a 397.2. Uh, last weekend, for comparison, they were at 396.25. So they ended up being a little bit higher. I think they they improved in, you know, for example, on P-bars a bit, um, but did a little bit worse on, on some of the other events. Um, but uh, overall, I think a, a pretty, pretty nice performance especially from this early and we're still waiting on the last score from cash ben what do you think about uh navy's just overall opening performance here for their season uh if i was on the floor with them today um you know it would feel like a normal meet for us um it has its ups and downs uh probably the coaches will you know have a nice long talk with them after and you know over go back over what you know they did have some things that went wrong today, but they want to just identify those things. Um, from my perspective as a spectator, I'm, you know, I'm happy with what I saw today. It's the team that I knew last year. It's the team that I know is going to continue to do great things this year, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, honestly, I think Navy's looking pretty, pretty solid um, overall. 60.1, finishing up the high bar, uh, uh, finishing up the high bar rotation. Finishing the meet with a 381.9, and I think that's, you know, that's that's a pretty solid score there. A lot of improvement, um, I think, to be made from from both teams on multiple events. But that's pretty much the same for everybody at this point in the season. And I think it's it's going to be a little bit about who can polish things up and uh, and come out the best, uh, you know, later in postseason. Yeah, for sure. So this pretty much wraps up the competition today. I don't think there's going to be any other changes here. Um, Final score, 397.2, 381.9. Ohio State uh, takes, that vic takes that victory today. Um, ben, thanks so much for, for coming on the stream. It's been awesome to get your, uh, get your perspective on, on things. It's uh, pretty unique to have kind of that, that military academy um, experience and, and talk to that a little bit. So thanks so much. Yeah, man, thank you. Thank you for having me. It was great to come out. And, um, yeah, I really appreciate what you're doing for the sport. And, Thank you to all the viewers that came out to uh, check it out today. Absolutely. And everybody else uh, that's watching, at 245 Central, we've got Oklahoma versus Army. It's going to be a great competition. And then we have another meet later tonight, 615 Central, and that'll be Cal versus Arizona State. i got great guests uh, coming on to co-commentate those. I hope to see you there. Uh, the next one's coming up really soon. So uh, a great day of, of men's gymnastics, and I'll see you guys on the next stream. Thanks so much, and uh, take care.